Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, to start, I'd like to have, I'm going to use the PowerPoint, actually, so I'll scoot over. Philippians 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Notice the word in the middle. Joy. Without that, it should be rejoice. <laughs> people here, how, how many of you here have ever just said, praise God? You're just so happy, you say, praise God. But how many of you actually do it? After you say, praise God, how many say, you just start praising Him. How many of you do that? How many of you, instead of saying praise God, how many of you just thank Him? You're like, thank you God for this. Instead of just saying praise Him, instead of talking to Him in the third person. When we first become Christians, since we all are Christians here, most of us, well, most of the older people here, when you became Christians, you probably were going through a rough time in your life, and then you found God, and then you had this inner joy in you, right? I'd assume most of you did. But as we like mature as Christians, as we realize how hard it is to be a Christian, with all the trials, not only spiritual but physical, we start to get burdened down, and we tend to lose that joy, and, and we start to kind of just go through the motions. It's like, as our knowledge increases, our joy goes down. And today I want to inspire you to be more joyful. <laughs> and so, right now I want to talk about a man named Nick Bajochi. I don't know if I said that right, but he's, a, he's from Brazil. He, he's a man who's just on fire for God. He just speaks with such vigor, such life, such charisma, with all this conviction and energy. He just is on fire. And I watched his sermon last night with my mom, and without her noticing, I started to get kind of teary. And I was like, I'm a guy, what's wrong with me? This <laughs> <laughs> usually doesn't happen when I listen to sermons. I started to get teary, so I kind of like was blinking my eyes to like dry him, so I didn't want to go like this, that would have gave it away. <laughs> and he, is, he was speaking at the Christ Cathedral. You can watch it on their website. I implore you to go do that. But. This is a man I actually admire, and I haven't even met him. And this is why he's so great. He was born without arms or legs. All he has is a little stub of a foot. And every year, he manages to save 100,000 people. And he brings them to the Lord. He's a missionary. He goes to Indonesia. He goes to Africa. He goes to third world countries. He can just go through the pictures. And he saves these people. And by far, he is the most joyful person I've seen. Most charismatic, most full of life. He's filled with the Holy Spirit. You can see it in him with all the joy that he brings to people. And he's so filled with joy that in his sermon, he says that the worst thing he's done in his life, he considers the worst thing he's done, was when he was eight, it was a fair prayer. He prayed to God that, he wanted arms and legs. And that was the worst thing he's ever done. <laughs> because, and then God answered him and he said, I, I made you complete. I made you to serve a purpose. You don't need arms and legs to serve the purpose I've done for you. And so us here, fully capable people, we lose our joy somehow. And yet this man without arms and legs, he manages to stay as positive as ever, more positive than me, more positive than all of us here probably combined. We need to find, we need to ask God, we just need to pray and appreciate everything we have because we have a relationship with a God, the creator of the universe, and he wants a personal relationship with us. We tend to forget that oftentimes, but it's something important that we need to remember we always need to have instilled in our hearts so we have an underlying joy no matter what trials we go through, no matter what we do. And that's actually one more time. Philippians 4 verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. Rejoice. <laughs> 